Hi. In this video, we will discuss optimization problems. Those are problems that in order to solve them, you will need to maximize or minimize a certain function. However, in many cases, this function will not be given to you explicitly. You will have to set it up yourself. You may also need to draw a diagram and introduce notation. Various relations between quantities involved will be given to you in words, and you will have to convert them into algebraic equations. In this clip, we will first solve an optimization problem, then outline some general guidelines for solving such problems, and then discuss a second example. You can navigate between the various parts of the clip by using the menu on your left. While watching the clip, keep in mind that many optimization problems can be solved in more than one way, and the solutions you are about to see are just one possible way to approach those problems. Let's begin by looking at the following question. Joe wants to build a rectangular fence that will enclose 120 square meters of area for his two dogs. Two opposite sides are to be made of wood at a cost of $5 per meter. The other two sides are to be made of wire at a cost of $6 per meter. Find the dimensions of the fence that will minimize the cost. First, let's make sure we understand the question. We need to find the dimensions of a rectangle. What do we know about this rectangle? Well, its area must be 120 square meters. We also need to minimize the cost associated with this rectangle. We know that two opposite sides of the fence will be made of wood and the other two of wire. We also have the cost of wood and wire per meter. This will enable us to write an expression for the cost and then minimize it. Let's draw a rectangle and think of it as our fence. Two sides of the fence will be made of wood, so let's color them in brown. The other two sides will be made of wire, so let's color them in gray. We will need to introduce notation for the quantities involved in this problem, namely, the dimensions of the fence and the cost. So let x and y be the length in meters of a side made of wood and wire, respectively. Also, let C be the total cost of the fence in dollars. The given data implies that x times y equals 120, since the area enclosed by the fence is 120 square meters. We can also write an expression for the cost in terms of x and y. We have two sides made of wood, each has length x, and the cost of one meter of wood is $5. Therefore, the total cost of wood is 5 multiplied by 2x. Similarly, the total cost of wire is 6 times 2y. So we get that c is equal to 10x plus 12y. We expressed c, the cost, in terms of two variables, x and y. But we can now eliminate one and get c as a function of one variable only. From the fact that the product of x and y is 120, we get that y equals to 120 over x. We can use that now to get that c equals to 10x plus 12 times 120 over x. This can be simplified to 10x plus 1440 over x. Recall that our goal is to minimize the cost of the fence, and we manage to express the cost in terms of one variable only, x. Note that x has to be a positive number, since it represents length. So we can now concentrate on the purely mathematical problem of minimizing the function c of x equals 10x plus 1440 over x for x is bigger than 0. To do that, let's compute the first derivative c prime, which equals to 10 minus 1440 over x squared, and then equate it to zero. The equation that we get is 10 minus 1440 over x squared equals zero. This can be simplified, and we get x squared equals 144. The solutions of this equation are positive and negative 12. But the only relevant solution is x equals 12, since x has to be a positive number. So x equals 12 is our only critical point. To check the behavior of c at this point, we can use the second derivative test. 
The second derivative c double prime is equal to 2880 divided by x cubed. If we let x equals 12, we clearly get a positive number. By the second derivative test, we conclude that c of x has a local minimum at x equals 12. But that is not the end of the story. When the question says minimize the cost, it means that we need to find the global minimum of the function and not just a local one. Fortunately, the local minimum at x equals 12 is also a global one. To see that, we can use a diagram. At x equals 12, our function has a local minimum, so roughly it looks like that. For positive x's less than 12, the function will be decreasing. And for x's greater than 12, it will increase. So it is clear now from this diagram that the point on the graph that corresponds to x equals 12 is the lowest point on the graph of the function. And therefore, we have a global minimum. More formally, the following theorem can be used. If a continuous function defined on an interval has a unique local extremum in the interior of that interval, then this extremum will be also a global one. Our function has a unique extremum, namely at x equals 12, and therefore it must be a global one. Recall that x and y represent the dimensions of our rectangular fence. We know now that the cost is minimized when x equals 12. But if x equals 12, then y, which is 120 over x, is equal to 10. Our conclusion is that the dimensions of the fence that will minimize the cost are 12 meters for each side made of wood and 10 meters for each side made of wire. And that's the answer to the given problem. We are going to outline now some general guidelines for solving an optimization problem. You may find them helpful in breaking the solution into several steps. But remember, those are general guidelines only. Different people may use different steps when solving an optimization problem. Others may use the same steps, but in a different order. Also, some of the steps may be irrelevant for certain questions, and you will have to skip them. We do hope, however, that you will find those steps useful. So here they are. 1. Read the problem and make sure you understand it. 2. Draw a diagram and introduce notation, if appropriate. 3. Use the information given in the question to write down relations between the variables involved and express the quantity to be optimized in terms of the other variables. Four. Express the quantity to be optimized as a function of one variable only and determine the domain of that function. 5. Find the global maximum or minimum of the function found in step 4. 6. Answer the question or questions posed in the problem. Let's use those guidelines to solve the following problem. The figure shows a right circular cylinder that is inscribed in a right circular cone of height h and base radius r. Find the largest possible volume of such a cylinder. First, we need to read the question and understand it. We have a cone, and its dimensions are h for the height and r for the base radius. We will treat h and r as fixed numbers that do not change throughout the discussion. We also have a cylinder, and the only thing that we know about it is that it is inscribed inside the cone, as the diagram shows. But there are many cylinders that can be inscribed within a cone. We need to find the one with the largest possible volume. The next step would be to draw a diagram and introduce notation. We already have a diagram but we will need to fix notation for the dimensions of the cylinder and its volume. So let y be the height of the cylinder, x its base radius, and v its volume. The next step would be to write relations between the variables and express the quantity to be optimized in terms of the other variables. 
The quantity to be optimized is the volume V. And we can use the formula from geometry to express it in terms of x and y. V will be equal to pi x squared, which is the area of the base of the cylinder, multiplied by y, its height. To get a relation between x and y, let's move our objects to get a side view of the cylinder and the cone. We now observe that those two triangles are similar. And we can use this fact, together with some geometry, to conclude that y over h will be equal to r minus x over r. This can be rewritten as y equals h times r minus x over r. The next step would be to express the quantity to be optimized as a function of one variable only and find the domain. We expressed v in terms of two variables, x and y, but we can now easily eliminate y by replacing it with the expression h times r minus x over r. So then v becomes a function of one variable only, which is equal to pi x squared times h times r minus x over r. This can be rewritten as pi h over r times r x squared minus x cubed. X is the base radius of the cylinder, and therefore it must be a positive number that is less than the base radius of the cone, r. So we can take our domain to be the set of all x's between 0 and r. We have decided to include the endpoints so that our domain will be a closed interval, and later on we will be able to use the extreme value theorem to identify the maximum of v. Let's move on now to the next step which is to find the maximum of our function. To maximize our function v for x's between 0 and r, let's compute the first derivative. v prime of x will be equal to pi h over r times 2rx minus 3x squared. Remember that we treat h and r as constants. This can be rewritten as pi h over r times x times 2r minus 3x. And now, let's solve the equation v prime of x equals 0. This will lead to the equation x times 2r minus 3x equals 0. And the solutions of this equation are x equals 0 and 2 thirds r. Observe that our function is a polynomial, and therefore it is continuous on its domain, which is a closed interval. By the extreme value theorem, v of x must have a maximum at a critical point inside the interval or at one of the endpoints. In our case, v will have a maximum at either x equals 0, x equals 2 thirds r, or at x equals r. To find where the global maximum of v occurs, let's evaluate our function v at the three candidates x equals 0, r, and 2 thirds r. It is easy to see that v of 0 and v of r are both 0. And let's also compute v of 2 thirds r. This is equal to pi h over r multiplied by r times 2 thirds r squared minus 2 thirds r cubed. This can be simplified and we get pi h over r times 4 over 9 r cubed minus 8 over 27 r cubed. We can further simplify to get 4 pi h r squared divided by 27. Know that this expression has to be a positive number. So since v is 0 at the endpoints x equals 0 and x equals r, and it is positive when x equals 2 thirds r, we conclude that v of x has a global maximum at x equals 2 thirds r. The maximal volume will be 4 pi h r squared divided by 27. We have basically solved the problem. But there is one more step that we shouldn't forget. We have to answer the question posed in the problem. The question was to find the largest possible volume of such a cylinder. And our answer is the largest possible volume of the cylinder is v equals 4 pi h r square divided by 27. I'd like to emphasize that there are many types of optimization problems, other than the two we presented here. 
The strategy for solving them will be similar, but the details may be quite different. You will have to practice in order to become comfortable with those kind of questions. And we suggest that you start by working on the problems we will show you now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.